Let's move on now to the sclerotic U.S. economy, and there is a major flashing red sign as to how and what people are doing to make a lot of money. It's actually a pretty good indicator of what our society rewards. Let's go and put this up there on the screen. And it turns out that none of the Forbes billionaires who are under the age of 30 are self-made for the very first time in fifth years. So since 2009, there has always been a member of the under 30 Forbes billionaires who actually generated their massive wealth on their own by starting their own company. This statistic is due to many of the past self-made billionaires aging into their 30s, but they are not being replaced by others in a similar financial situation. And in fact, hefty inheritances are now starting what is uh, the outlet is calling the long-anticipated generational wealth transfer. The world's youngest billionaire is a 19-year-old in Brazil, college student with a net worth of $1.1 billion, who has a minority stake in her late grandfather's electrical equipment company, accompanied mm -hmm. by her older sister, who also holds a minority stake, accompanied by a pair of 20-somethings from Ireland, who have a net, net worth of about $5 billion each. Same thing. Family money, You've got the sons uh, of former uh, Tata Group founders as well. Same thing, inheriting their, I think their grandfather, maybe great-grandfather's minority stake in their company. I think the list can go on and on. In every single case, every billionaire who is under the age of 30 has inherited wealth. On top of that, if you actually take a look at the overall list, uh, it is striking to me that the world's richest man is no longer a Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk who say what you want. They actually started their own companies. It is uh, LVMH, the, the head of LVMH, the guy who sells luxury goods like Louis Vuitton and others, basically uh, selling it to middle-class folks in order to flash wealth around. That is now the most valuable and richest person on earth. So the reason we wanted to spend some time on this, I think, Crystal, is this is the sign of a sclerotic economy. Many of the previous self-made billionaires in their 20s and others in the 2010s were people like Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey or the other tech founders. You may criticize those companies and the creation now, but at that time, it was genuinely entrepreneurial and it was adding a lot, at least in GDP-wise, to the U.S. economy. But we don't even have that anymore for the very first time now. And it's not just here, it's all across the globe because America is the leader. Now it's, even if you look at the new entrance to the Forbes list, it's all private equity guys, financialization, mm -hmm. And hedge fund traders, you you, That's right. you those people would disappear tomorrow, and not a single one of us would know in terms of the economy. Not the same with Amazon, not the same with Tesla, but that's what's actually being rewarded right now. Yeah, that's so true. And I do think it's noteworthy that most of these young billionaires, they're not even inheriting the money from their parents. Yeah, they're inheriting it from their grandparents. Right. Like, so it shows you that this trend has been, um, we've been headed in this direction for quite a while. And, you know, it ties in with also some of the corporate failures that we see, like at Boeing, where even within a large established corporation, it's not innovation that's rewarded by the market. It is financialization. It's cutting costs. It's union busting. It's, you know, pretending like you're a Wall Street stock trader instead of a company making planes. It's putting Nikki Haley on your corporate board and all of the, you know, the direction that that entails. That's the reality of our economy now. And so many of the quote unquote best and brightest, you know, the people who have abnormal skills in terms of science and math, et cetera, so many of them decided that the way that they could make it big was go to Wall Street and become, you know, glorified gamblers. And um, even in at the corporate level, it's not like corporations have really been competing to offer the best product. They've been competing to game the system and generate anti-competitive advantages. You know, that is one thing the Biden administration is doing that I support is trying to roll some of that back and force a more actually competitive marketplace um, versus what CEOs now are rewarded for is how can I rig the market? How can I create a monopoly so that workers and consumers have no choice? You know, that's reflected in the fact that you have very little innovation across the economy. That's just not the thing that's rewarded. And then the other thing that is very reflective here, especially in American context, but as you said, Sagar, and, you know, for better or worse, America really set, sets the stage for the rules of the game economically around the world. 
Um, you've had now years of very low taxation rates and especially these gigantic loopholes where you can pass these large fortunes from generation to generation with very little in the way of taxes being paid back into the societies <clears throat> that you come from, especially in an American context. And so you build these massive pots of generational wealth that get hoarded and, you know, very little shared with the rest of society. So we've got this massive, almost unparalleled historical, historically inequality, levels of inequality. And, you know, this is some of the sclerotic, um, ossified results that you end up um, getting at the end of the day. Yeah, it's very, it's very bad. And it's one of those where if we are having, I mean, look, it's elite, again, it's who is getting rewarded? Like, if you're a very ambitious person and you're going to college and you're looking out there, uh, previously, a lot of people were inspired in the 2010s. They're like, I'm gonna go start my own company. Well, if you're looking at this and nobody's even getting rich starting their own companies, you're like, well, should I do that or should I just go work at a safe job where I can work from home, make you know a relatively upper middle class salary? That's not really something that you want to reward. Or worse, you're like, well, if the only way to become a billionaire is to go work on Wall Street, so be it. That's just the way things are right now. Let's put this up there on the screen. This is uh, similar to the conversation here. Uh, Business Insider writing, quote, millennials and Gen Z's trendy new splurge is groceries. They say that younger generations are now spending more on groceries than other categories, according to a McKinsey report. And uh, according, I mean, look, I would take what McKinsey says with a grain of salt, but mm -hmm. here, at the very least, what they are saying is that the increase in grocery prices that are uh, we've seen with inflation are being disproportionately felt then by people who are in the lower end of the income spectrum and not at the height of their earning potential, and that they are having to spend more on groceries simply in order to maintain like a medium quality of life. Uh, you can take it the other way. Uh, pre I've seen pre previously people be like, oh, well, this is like the new avocado toast criticism mm -hmm. of the millennials. They're like, oh, they're spending $14. It's like, oh, they're spending too much money on groceries. But if you think about it, you know, this is something, spending more on groceries actually indicates that you're eating out much less, which is mm -hmm. already a significant behavioral change from where things were previously. So it's like if you spend money on going to brunch, you're being criticized. Now if you spend money buying food, maybe even marginally better food than you previously uh, would have done to still try and save money from eating out and to enjoy, have some enjoyment in your life, you're also being criticized here. Yeah, I love the way that they are framing this as some sort of like decadence that you're eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How dare you? Spend money on groceries. Get to your point. Yeah, that's the advice. Anytime there's like a financial call, oh, how do I save money, et cetera. So one of the first things they say is stop eating out, eat at home. And then they do that and then they're criticized for that as well. Not to mention, you know, the bottom line here is that millennials and Gen Z have been able to build much less wealth than the boomers. So they've been hit much harder by inflation you know, it's still the case that um, your groceries, the same basket of groceries costs $445 more a month to purchase yeah. versus a year ago. So even as we have this conversation, oh, inflation is coming down, it's not as bad as usual. Well, the prices are still really high and none of these corporations are gonna bring them down on their own because why would they? They're making record-breaking profits. So yeah, I just think it's, it's amazing the ways that news organizations find to smear people or, you know, even indulging in like the most basic of luxuries. Oh, I bought an extra snack item at Trader Joe's is one of the things that they mention in this article. And now you're being basically smeared for that. And at the same time, you contrast that with these um, billionaire millennials and Zoomers who inherited it all from mommy and daddy. And you see the massive gulf that has emerged between, you know, people who did absolutely nothing to quote unquote earn their station in life will never have to worry about money. We'll pass their billions down to their kids and their grandkids. And um, the Zoomers and millennials who didn't have mommy and daddy's bank account backing them and the way that they have really struggled to be able to get a foothold and just to be able to make it on a basic level. 
Yeah, and we can also see how the groceries thing is actually fitting into an overall trend of reduction in lifestyle. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This is from a new report from Redfin showing what renters and homeowners are skipping. Essentials like meals and medica med medical care to try and keep a roof over their head. So they say the top sacrifices that people have made recently in order to afford housing. Keep in mind, this is not just people who are homeowners, but this also includes renters where we've seen a major spike in rental uh, prices. They say took no or fewer vacations. You've got 34% of people who are saying that. Skipped meals is 22%. Worked additional hours, shifts at my job is 20%. Sold my belongings is 20 Borrowed money from friends or family that I will pay back, 18%. Dipped into retirement savings, 18%. Delayed or skipped healthcare and medical treatments, 15%. Worked an extra job is 15 Worked a side hustle like food delivery, 14%. And received money from friends or family that is not expected to be paid back is 14%. So overall, across the board, you're seeing a reduction in lifestyle, skipping meals, having to work additional hours. Now, I have no problem with some of these things if it is to save up for something which is a luxury or to upgrade your lifestyle. But the problem here is that this is just retention of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's to live exactly the same life. So you have to live the exact same life that you were living four or five years ago, but you actually have to give up a lot of things to just maintain that. That's not the way that things were supposed to go on an upward trajectory. You're working a side hustle so that you can move into a bigger house. Cool. I think that's awesome. But having to work a side hustle or something like that so you continue to make rent in the same place that you've been living for five to 10 years with no hope of being able to buy a house, that's a very, very different story. And that's actually what comes across to me in some of this data. Yeah, housing is so key, is such a central part of the story too, because really the top line from this piece is that they found that half of renters and homeowners are struggling to afford their monthly housing payments. I mean, it's just, it's insane just to have a roof over your head and not like any sort of luxurious fashion, but just a roof over your head. People are having to skip meals. People who are working full time or doing all the things right. And by the way, you know, if they went to college and did that thing that they were told to do, they've also got these giant debt payments hanging over them from the jump when they start their careers. And then to add insult to injury, they got to be smeared when they quote unquote splurge on the trendy new thing, buying groceries. So, uh, you know, we've we've said this a, a lot of times. We've got another story here about housing that is really important. But this is such a central determinant over whether or, pe or not people have sort of a basic stable, not even luxury, but just stable lifestyle, able to eat meals on a regular basis, able to, oh my God, actually maybe go on a vacation once a year, imagine that. And the fact that housing is so extraordinarily high in so many places with no signs of abating has really stolen those sorts of, you know, simple splurges, simple luxuries, basic living standards from entire generations at this point. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.